Okay, when you're installing the belt on a power stroke track, you want to look at your picture here of what, how it's supposed to go, and you want to get it all on there like it should be, and, all, and make sure it's sitting down in the grooves when the rib parts are down. Have a breaker bar or a ratchet, and you actuate, you move the, uh, move the uh, uh, tensioner, and you release the tensioner, and you got a belt that's installed. <laughs> of course, it's a whole lot harder when you have the fan and everything on here. At this point in the water puff uh, replacement procedure, it just makes it a heck of a lot easier to put it on right now because you can sit there and look at all the pulleys and not have to struggle and fight. This is especially true on a van. A van is everything, of course, is always much more difficult except for maybe changing the turbocharger on a van. Uh, uh, but that's how you install a belt. Just turn the tensioner, get it loose, slide it off of this one, the top one. And then when you go back to put it, make sure it's sitting correctly and loosely in all the areas, on all the pulleys, and it's where it's supposed to be. And you take the tension off, you slide it under this pulley, and you're done. No sense making a big deal out of it. This is the best way to put it on. Now the next step in the process is to go ahead and reinstall the fan. Remember, when we took the fan and the fan shroud out, they had to come out together uh, because they, uh, there's no way to get one by the other. So you, you set them up so that they're ready to drop in. Fan shroud is pointed the correct way and the fan is pointed the correct way. And slide them down carefully in here. Slide it down in there. Don't bounce the fan against the radiator. The lower part of the, of the fan shroud, let me put back out here so you can see. Lower part of the fan shroud has two little, two little nubs right here on each side. And this is where your, this is where your lower radiator hose goes. You can actually rest it on there. But you got to make sure that these little nubs, these tabs, are stuck in the bottom of the little clip down there in the bottom of the radiator. You got to make sure that it's in there correctly. You don't want it flapping back when you're going down the road. So take the two of them, slide it down in there again. Aiming for those tabs down there, you can put your eyeballs right, right here and you can see where it's got to go. Once it's slid in, once you got it in both sides correctly, then you let the fan rest back against the motor. Now we're going to reinstall the bolts to go to the top of the radiator, a you know, fan shroud and into the radiator, right here. Just finger tighten them. Slide it, up, slide it back up and where it's supposed to go. And you want to finger tighten these. Just enough to hold the fan shroud. We'll tighten them up in just a second. Make sure there's a, there's a uh, hose that goes, comes out of here, right here for the, uh, for the uh, radiator box that sits here. That's the overflow tube. Make sure that you have that on the correct side of the fan shroud. Try not to lose nut. If you drop it, then you're going to have to go underneath and get it. You're going to have to have a light and you're going to have to have a magnet on a stick at some point because you're going to, the bolt's going to slip out of your fingers. Okay? I've been doing mechanicing for forever and uh, I still drop bolts. So make sure you have a good, a good magnet on the stick there, stick magnet, one that can, one that can telescope out. This particular one has a sleeve on it that, so that it will only magnetize on the very tip. On the side, it won't magnetize. But when you, when you go straight down on something, it'll pick it up. Now, if you try to stick it down through like that, it'll stick to everything on the motor when you pass it through. So it's nice to have this little sleeve on here. Now, you might want, if you drop something down into a bucket of oil or something like that, you want to, might want to leave this sleeve up, and you can just reach down in there and it will pick it up. But when you're picking up a specific item and you have to pass other iron pieces, you don't want it constantly sticking to the uh, sticking to it. And it's because it's you know this was a fairly powerful magnet. Anyway, we got the nut back, put it in top of the fan shroud, just put them in finger tight. Now I'm going to show you a procedure. You're not going to find it in any book. And uh, I've got to I've got to give my disclaimer right now. If you attempt to do what I'm about to do here and you have somebody at the driver's seat cranking the engine, you're going to lose your fingers, okay? But if you do it from the starter solenoid with a start switch, you can do it without the motor cranking up. If you do it in the, where you jump across here, 
and it's not turned on at the key, you can crank the engine without starting it. You do not want to do this from the driver's seat. If you do it from the driver's seat, the engine will crank up, the fan will thread on there, and it'll take your finger. What we're about to do is we're going to crank the motor and make the threads thread into this fan. This is the quick way to do this. Sometimes you can drive yourself crazy trying to get this off. So G is going to assist me here. Hold the light for me, G. Now we're going to thread the, we're going to crank the motor and thread the, uh, the fan onto the water pump. You have to do this with a remote start. You jump across the starter solenoid, and but you do not turn the engine key on. In fact, we're going to go double check. Make sure you have the keys next to you. Don't have the keys in the truck. If the keys aren't in the truck, then the key can't be on. Okay, they're not there. 